I can't believe you could stand living with such a useless loser you call a husband. He's completely invalid. I told you, you should have dumped Albert as soon as you had a chance, but you never took my advice. Now look where you are, burdened by a deadweight man who can't even help himself go to the toilet. How pathetic. Dad, what are you talking about? How can you make such hurtful remarks about my husband? He has done nothing to deserve such criticism. In fact, he has always been a devoted family man who takes exceptional care of both me and our child. Of course, he hasn't been the best version of himself since he was diagnosed with cancer, but it's not his fault at all. Illness can affect anyone, including you and me. My husband is simply facing unfortunate circumstances that are beyond his control. Huh? Having cancer is not enough to justify your husband's laziness? He's been nothing but a deadweight to this family. You know he's been shirking his responsibilities as a husband, including providing for our family financially. He hasn't earned a single penny since he got sick, and he still has the audacity to call himself your husband? What a complete waste of oxygen. Our family would be in a much better position if that bum died. In fact, the sooner your husband becomes dust, the better. Dad, why are you being so harsh to my husband? He has never done anything to deserve your treatment. He has always been respectful to you, and I think you should be respectful to him too. Respect? Who needs me respect, especially from someone useless loser like Albert? If he truly wants to demonstrate respect towards me, then let it be tangible and material. I'm talking about something I can physically touch, smell, spend, and indulge in. The kind of thing that can satisfy me. Oh, you mean the kind of thing that could satisfy your bottomless greed? I see what you're getting at. No need to beat around the bush. So, you want Albert's money, right? That's right. Money. Money is the only tangible measure that could validate your husband's respect for me as his father-in-law. But I bet that worthless piece of trash can't generate any income on his own anymore. He's basically a dead meat now. Dad, you really need to stop. My husband hasn't done anything to deserve your insults. In fact, he's the only one who has been shouldering the financial responsibilities of our household for the past five years since we got married. He's also been the one providing financial support, even transferring money to sustain your lazy lifestyle after you quit your job and became unemployed. Excuse me? Now you're talking back to your own parents because of some useless moron like Albert? And to add insult to injury, you had the audacity to label your own father as lazy? Let me knock some sense into your head. Your worthless husband is on his deathbed. His time is running out, and the only sensible course of action is to discard that thrash and rid yourself of this burden. End of discussion. I'm so appalled by your behavior that I don't even know what to say right now. My husband has been suffering from cancer, which is a serious illness, but he has never uttered a single complaint. People with remarkable resilience such as Albert deserve recognition and rewards, not criticism from you. Recognition and rewards? Don't be ridiculous. Daisy, why can't you be a little less stubborn and divorce Albert while you still have the chance? You're young and have your whole life ahead of you. Instead of wasting your youth alongside that worthless comebag of a husband, you should be out there seeking a suitable partner who truly values you. Trust me, he's not worth it and you deserve better. You deserve someone who can take care of you in every way possible, especially with regard to financial matters. Why don't you just skip the pretense and outright say that you want me to find a wealthy husband so that you can benefit from his money? Well, sorry to tell you this, but I won't be swayed. I'm committed to standing by my husband's side no matter what. I understand that he needs me, as do our child and I. He's the best husband I could ever ask for, and he's an exceptional father to Layla. Oh, wow. That's just so touching. I'm on the verge of tears here and I can barely contain my emotions. Such an incredibly impressive performance worthy of an Oscar. Boo-hoo! Spare me the sob story. A man who's unable to make money is basically a dead man. So in my eyes, Albert is already dead. I don't care how good of a man Albert is. If he can't earn any money, then he doesn't deserve to live here. That freeloader should be crushed under my shoes like the little worm he is. Dad, you're way out of line. You call him a freeloader, but in reality, you're still basically living off his paycheck. So please, start treating my husband with more respect. I'm living off your husband's paycheck? 
That's the most hilarious thing I've heard in my entire life. You've truly given me the most genuine and authentic laugh I've ever experienced. I know you're trying to defend your husband, but perhaps next time, you could come up with a more compelling argument to justify his uselessness. It's evident that Albert hasn't been going to work lately, which means that he's not earning any income on his own. Isn't it enough to call that man a leech? Everything I told you is true. I've been using my savings to pay for all the bills in this household. A significant portion of my savings comes from Albert's income. Whatever you say, Albert is still a complete failure, just like his own mother and father. I'm surprised that his parents haven't disowned him yet. If I had a child like Mr. Good for Nothing Albert, I would have given him up for adoption a long time ago. <sighs> you really are immune to reason. Look, I'll talk to you later. I have to rush to the hospital to check on Albert. He just underwent chemotherapy. And I can imagine he must be completely exhausted at the moment. Like hell I would care about that. Do what you want to do. But don't even mention your deadweight husband's name when you talk to me. It's simply disgusting. I feel like I'm gonna throw up just thinking about him. He looks so skinny and pale recently. I mean, he can't even walk properly. And he smells terrible with all those chemicals they put in his body. I hardly recognize him as a human being anymore. Hey, I'm warning you. Either you keep that dead meat at the hospital or in our basement. The dog cage in the backyard would do the work too. In any case, he's completely forbidden to sleep in our tidy and hygienic bedrooms. How dare you insult Albert like that? He's your son-in-law and he looks up to you. You should be ashamed of yourself for saying such hurtful things. Whatever, drama queen. By the way, remember to bring along your useless daughter with you to the hospital. Cause ain't no way I'm gonna take care of that little brat. Do you realize that she's been crying nonstop for the last 30 minutes? It's as loud as if an airplane is taking off right here. Are you serious? Now you're placing blame on my daughter as well? She's only three months old, and crying is a natural part of her development. It's unreasonable to expect her to have control over it at this stage. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get that scoundrel out of my sight too. I'm trying to take a power nap here, and I don't appreciate being disturbed by some worthless little kid. I swear, if she continues crying, I'll throw her right out the streets. No kidding. I'm on my way home to pick her up and take her to the hospital with me. Please don't do anything that'll hurt her. She's your granddaughter. Then hurry up and get your lardy ass home. I don't have all day to wait for you. Like mother, like daughter. You two are equally as useless. Daisy, what have I told you about your goddamn daughter? I don't want to listen to her crying for any more minute. This needs to stop. What do you mean? Have you forgotten that Layla is just a baby? Babies cry, and there's not much we can do about it. I tried to calm her down, but I also have housework to do. It's becoming a spoiled brat, just like her mother. And why? It's because you haven't given it a proper scolding. Make it stop. I'm sorry? Are you actually telling me to scold a three-month-old baby? She's not even fully aware of the things around her. It's not like I can ask her what's wrong. Come on, it was in your belly for nearly ten months, wasn't it? You had more than enough time to teach it how to keep its mouth shut, but you didn't. You chose to spoil that little creature rotten. If it won't quit crying, then tape its mouth shut for all I care. That'll get it to stop real fast. Are you seriously telling me to tape my daughter's mouth shut? That's absolutely barbaric. You're supposed to be Layla's grandfather, so start acting like one. If you don't like that idea, why not hit it every time it cries? I guarantee it'll stop once you've done it enough. Seriously, how could you even call yourself a mother if you can't even get a kid to behave? Now you're blaming me for not knowing how to teach my daughter how to behave? Why don't you look at yourself? You never bothered to behave like a proper father to me. You left all the parenting responsibilities to my mother. What were you doing while my mother had to shoulder all the duties of doing the housework, working full time, and still taking care of me? You claimed to be working late, but you were actually out drinking with your friends. Now, you're lazing around all day doing absolutely nothing other than watching TV, sleeping, drinking, and yelling at me. Ha! Huh. Now you're lecturing me about how to be a good parent? 
Don't even think for a moment that you're the mistress of this household just because you gave birth to some insignificant child. Stop trying to divert the subject. If you can't get your useless daughter to stop crying, then get that snot-nosed kid with you out of the house. And of course, your worthless invalid husband too. Problem solved! Wow, imagine that coming from a man who knows nothing but squandering his child's hard-earned money. What are you even implying? Are you suggesting that I'm freeloading off of you? I wouldn't even consider touching your meager salary if your mother had left a more substantial inheritance. Do you know how much she left me? Only $50,000! How could I live with only those measly coins? It's not even worth mentioning. Besides, I used up all that money a long time ago. Seriously? $50,000 is a lot of money! And we would still be able to save it up if you didn't go to the casino and gamble up a storm. My mom worked her fingers to the bone to leave behind that money for us. But what did you do? You wasted it all on gambling! Stop talking crap about your own parents. Who do you think you are to be dissing me? If you and your husband were able to generate more income, I wouldn't have to live the way I do now, the lifestyle of a beggar. I deserve better than this, much, much better than this. I'm toiling every day to earn money and support our entire family, including covering my husband's medical expenses. I take care of my husband and my three-month-old child, and I'm constantly drained and exhausted. Yet, here you are, still complaining that I'm not doing enough? Perhaps you should take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, what have you ever done to contribute around the house, aside from yelling and complaining? Yada yada, I don't have time for your vent. Don't blame me for your own incompetence. I wouldn't have to yell at you if you were being a proper mother. Listen, all I ever wanted is for you to somehow get your useless daughter to stop crying all day and all night. Is that too much to ask? Do you know what you can do to avoid being bothered by the noise? Go out there, find yourself a job, and start working. Yeah, that's a good idea. Excuse me? Now you're forcing this old man to go out there and pursue employment on my own? Me? Working? That's literally elder abuse. I will never let you exploit me, your father, for your own gain. You're a monster for even thinking of that idea. Oh, please, spare me the theatrics. Elder abuse? You're not even that old. You barely reached your 60s. That means you're totally capable of getting a job and working. Let me make it abundantly clear to your peanut-sized brain. I don't work, so stop suggesting such a ludicrous idea. I'm your freaking father, and as such, I need to be taken care of and treated in a respectful manner. Got it? Dad, are you there inside the house? Can you please open the door for me? I'm here with my daughter and husband, and we've been waiting outside for at least an hour. I've tried calling, pressing the front doorbell, and knocking at the door, but nothing has worked. Can you please be quiet for a goddamn second? What do you want? Turning this house into a circus? I'm trying to get some sleep here. You're sleeping again? I saw empty beer bottles outside. Were you drinking? Why can't you be a responsible father and stop drinking for once? I've had enough hardships in my life, and I don't need you adding to it. Yeah, so what? I had a few beers. What's the big deal? And you know what they always do after drinking. They sleep. Now leave me alone so I can get some rest. I'm tired of you making all this noise. Your daughter has been crying and wailing all day. I don't need you to make me lose any more sleep. Bobby, I'm being serious. Open this door immediately. Are you aware that there's a snowstorm raging outside? Do you truly want to subject us to the risk of freezing to death in such frigid conditions? My husband is still recovering from his cancer treatment and our daughter is just a few months old. They cannot withstand being exposed to this extreme cold. Didn't you hear what I said? I'm trying to get some sleep. I am tucked inside a blanket with a heater on full blast, so there's no way I'm gonna get out of bed just to open the door for you and your useless daughter and husband. Just stay out there and freeze to death, for all I care. Are you out of your mind? Please, let us inside. It's impossible for us to remain outside in this harsh weather. I'm trembling from the cold. My hands are nearly frozen. 
Serves you right. If I let you inside the house, that brat of yours will start crying and making a fuss again. So enjoy waiting outside until midnight. No one's gonna help you. Once you two stand in the snow for a while, I'm sure it'll help you shut your worthless daughter up. Honestly, that thing is so filthy and gross. Look at all the snot and drool. Ah, the mere thought of it gives me chills. Goodness, I should have done this way sooner. This house is finally so quiet after a long time. What a relief. Now I can relax and enjoy myself. I'm a genius. Please unlock the door. If we keep standing here like this, my baby's gonna die. Why don't you go and rent a hotel for the night? Use your brain. You're a grown adult now. Stop relying on others to come up with solutions for you. Didn't you hear what I just said? There's a snowstorm going on, and I can't even find a single taxi around. The snow is falling so heavily, I can hardly see anything. How could you be so lazy that you can't even get your butt downstairs to open the door for me? Is it something so difficult to do? No way! Why should I do that? To be completely honest, I planned to kick your family out of this house a long time ago. You don't deserve to stay here. All you've ever done is consistently bother me. I should have taken out trash like you since the very beginning, after your mom died. You truly are irrational, Dad. Don't you have any concern for the well-being of your own daughter and grandchild? Not at all? Good question. You know what? I don't even consider such a noisy brat my grandchild. In fact, I hope that irredeemable moron hurries up and dies. It would make the world a better place to live in. You are truly a monster. We're literally freezing out here. Can you at least open the door and give me a jacket or a coat? Anything. No way in hell that's gonna happen. Are you trying to trick me into unlocking the door for you? What a scoundrel full of tricks. I can't believe that you even think of setting a trap for your own father. You know what? Just stay out there and die like filthy rats. Freezing to death is probably the easiest and least painful way of dying. So I bet you'll enjoy it. Besides, your useless husband is dying anyway. So what's the difference if he dies now? <laughs> I know you don't like my husband, but there's no reason to hate my daughter. She's innocent and has never done anything to hurt you. Is that kid really that important to you? If that's the case, you should have put a leash on it and kept it chained in the backyard. Then you could have prevented it from being chased out. But for now, you all should die and disappear in the snow. You know what? I've had enough of your cruelty. I'm leaving and I'll never come back. So don't even think of contacting me again. Don't act so cocky. That should be my line. Anyways, have fun playing around in the snow and getting buried alive by it. <laughs> As for me, I'm gonna tuck myself deeper in this blanket and get all cozy while your whole family freezes to death outside in a heavy snowstorm. What a life. Hey, useless cow, where the hell are you at? Why didn't you answer my phone? Did you deliberately ignore me? How dare you? Why are you contacting me now? Do you even realize how late at night it is right now? Oh, so you're still alive. I thought you're already dead. But why are you becoming so defensive? I simply want to call and check up on you. What's wrong with a father expressing concern for his daughter? Are you kidding me? You're the one who left me and my family outside in a severe snowstorm for a whole hour. So why the sudden interest in where I am right now? It shouldn't concern you in the slightest. Of course, I couldn't care less about you, but I have something really important to talk about, so pick up the damn phone. No, I won't pick up the phone. Why should I even do that? You should consider yourself lucky that I was able to get help from one of the friendly neighbors who lives nearby. They were kind enough to provide me shelter in their home and offer warm milk to us. Once the snowstorm subsided, I managed to hail a taxi, and now my daughter, husband, and I are safely staying at my friend's house. He generously agreed to accommodate us until we can secure a new place to live. Excuse me? Who gave you permission to do that? You are a married woman, and you conveniently stayed at your friend's house? And not to mention, that friend is a man. 
That's simply disgusting. Since when did I need permission to seek shelter when necessary? Do you really think that I was actually going to wait outside in the snow? Of course I had to come up with some solution to help myself and my family. Look, now is not the time to discuss that. Do you still have the key to our house? I have it, but why are you asking me about it? Then come home and give it to me now. I'm being dead serious. You have to do as I say immediately. There's no time to lose. Why are you in dire need for me to come back home and give you the key to our house? What happened? The thing is, I made the decision to step out of the house and verify if you were still alive. I didn't see anyone outside, so I became suspicious, thinking it could be a trap of some sort. I had a hunch that you might be hiding nearby, waiting to seize the house and lock me outside, just as I had done to you. That's why I went a little ahead of myself and locked the door to make sure that you wouldn't go inside. But unfortunately... What? I would never stoop to such a thing. I'm not like you. What happened after that? Well, the thing is, I already locked the door, but I forgot to bring the key with me. Now I'm outside the house, all trembling and shivering. I'm in nothing but my pajamas. I tried to knock on the neighbor's door, but they didn't answer. It's only one in the morning, so they're probably all asleep. Well, I hope you enjoy having a taste of your own medicine. You left me and my family outside in the middle of a snowstorm. And you were so eager to talk about us losing our lives in the snow. Now you're experiencing a somewhat similar situation. How do you feel about it? I guess it must be so much fun, huh? Now it's no time for jokes. Remember, your dearest father is all alone outside in the freezing cold. So why don't you stop talking and get your ass up here to help me out a bit? I'm sorry, but my friend's house is way too far from our house. It'll take around two hours to drive there. Two hours? Are you freaking kidding me? I'll be a dead body by the time you arrive. Stop joking around and come here immediately. Why should I bother? I'm comfortably nestled in this warm plush blanket, and the outside is bitterly cold. Why would I even consider leaving the comfort of my bed and venturing into such harsh weather? It's not something anyone in their right mind would do. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> You're insane. Your father is about to freeze to death, and all you can think of is making fun of me? That's precisely what you did to me when I was outside in the snowstorm the other day. Don't you recall? But those are two different things. As your father, I have the right to mock you. But as my daughter, you have a responsibility to assist me. It's a matter of common sense. Even a three-year-old child understands that. What kind of reasoning is that? If you continue to act so irrationally, I have no intention of helping you. Just wait outside in the freezing cold until morning then. Okay, okay, I admit, I did you wrong. Happy? Now come back and give me the key to our house. I'm about to freeze like an ice cube. <sighs> Listen, I've just contacted 911 and they assured me that help is on the way. Once you're safely inside the house, be prepared to face legal consequences as you'll be taken to court for child abuse which will result in a prison sentence. What? Prison sentence? Child abuse? What on earth are you blabbering about? I seriously don't understand. You don't understand? Are you pretending or are you actually that dense? Have you already forgotten how you left me and our three-month-old child outside the house in freezing temperatures? If our neighbor hadn't provided us shelter, I might not even be here. You literally put me and my family in a life-threatening situation. That's why you need to pay a heavy price for your appalling crime. Look, Daisy, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Why don't we handle it privately and find a peaceful resolution? Bringing this matter to the authorities is definitely not necessary, don't you think? Daisy, please understand that I'm your father and I've undergone a complete transformation. I've changed my ways and become a caring father to you and a loving grandfather to Layla. Let's leave all this behind and let us embark on a new chapter in our lives. Can we agree on that? Daisy? Are you there? Daisy! Finally, the rescuers arrived just in time to assist my father in entering the house and provided him with the necessary support. Shortly after, he was summoned to court to face charges of child abuse resulting in his imprisonment. Even during the court trial, his aggressive behavior remained unchanged. 
He continued to hurl insults at me, my husband, and even attempted to assault my daughter. I feel a sense of relief now that I no longer have to deal with his toxicity in my life. I am thrilled to share that my husband's cancer treatment has yielded positive results, and there is a strong possibility of him becoming a cancer survivor. With the unwavering support of my husband and daughter, I firmly believe that I can conquer any obstacles that come my way in life.